Hello, my name is Chris Lurson, Tillage Product Specialist with Case IH. Today, we want to review six key steps and adjustments that need to be made to the Akala Tiger 875 to capitalize on its agronomics, ruggedness, and overall productivity. Let's look at what those key steps are. The first step is pre-field checks. Second, set shank depth, then leveling the Akala Tiger 875. Set the front disc depth. Fifth is setting the leveler and the tiger paw crumbler. And last, any final adjustments to assure proper output. Insert the drawbar pin, attach the safety chain, hydraulic hoses, and the seven pin electrical connector, and check the operation of all lights. Check the hose link on the swinging hose boom, and the hoses and lighting wiring should have a small droop, but should hang just above the hitch area to prevent any hose damage. Next, check the tire pressure in all of the tires and refer to the operator's manual for those correct pressures. In order to properly set the Akala Tiger 875, we must first find the compaction layer. To find the compaction layer, dig a hole the size of a five gallon pail. With a pocket knife, insert the pocket knife into the side of the hole and pull up gently until you find an area of resistance in that hole. Okay? Repeat that again to assure you found the bottom of the compaction layer. Okay? So at this point, this is the bottom of our compaction layer. If you would like to see the thickness or understand the thickness of the compaction layer, take your pocket knife, insert it into the top of the hole and push downwards gently until you find an area of resistance again. Repeat that so we, to, to assure that we found that same compaction layer level. Okay. This would be the top of our compaction layer. Okay. We pick that out. Let's we'll put our knife back into the bottom of the layer again. And using a measuring device, such as my tiger stick here, place that on the top of the pocket knife and understand from the top of the soil surface that we are at basically 10 and a quarter inches deep to the bottom of the compaction layer. Once we've found the bottom of that compaction layer, which in this case is 10 and a quarter inches deep, the Akala Tiger 875 to maximize that fracture of that compaction layer should be set at one inch deeper than the compaction layer. In this case, 11 and a quarter inches. To set the depth, adjust the crank of the single point depth control. Turn counterclockwise to insert the tool into the ground further. Turn the crank clockwise to shallow the tool up. Once adjustments have been made, drive ahead in low gear, lower the shanks to full depth, and then stop with the shank still in the ground, and measure the depth, make additional adjustments as necessary to reach the depth needed. After adjusting the shank depth, assure that the Akalo Tiger is level front to back. Drive ahead slowly, lower the shanks to the set depth, and then stop. Compare the blade depth of the front blades to the rear blades by removing loose soil directly behind each gang, and measure the depth found. Adjust the turn buckle on the front side of the tool as needed to achieve level output. Check and recheck after each adjustment is made. Once the Akala Tiger is level, recheck the shank depths again to assure that the depth that you desire is still being achieved. The next step is setting the front disc gang depth. The disc should be operated between two and six inches deep and enough to cut and mix residue. To adjust the gangs, use the hydraulic lever in the tractor cab to raise or lower the disc gangs as needed and insert the depth stop on the cylinder once we've found the desired depth. It's important to note while operating the spring pack pressure indicator should be operated in the green zone only. Avoid running in the red zone or damage to your Akala Tiger may occur. The fifth step is setting the depth of the rear disc levelers, and in this case, the Tiger Paw Crumbler. The depth of the levelers should be set deep enough to fill the shank's paths. This should be checked after running at operating speeds, and the surface behind the leveler should leave small to moderate ridges for overwintering or feed the reel, coil tine harrow, or spike tooth harrow properly. Once the correct depth is found, use the cylinder stops 
and install them on the cylinder so that setting can be found later if accidental adjustments are made. The Tiger Paw Crumbler found behind the rear disc levelers is intended to size clods and give a perfect field finish. There are three positions that the Tiger Paw Crumbler can be placed in. The first position is down pressure mode. This is the most common position. The second position is float and uses only the weight of the crumbler to level and size clods. This position works well in wet or muddy conditions to prevent the crumbler from plugging. The third position is lifting the reel from the ground. This position may be used most commonly in extreme wet conditions. If you have the hydraulic cylinder option for the Tiger Paw Crumbler positioning, use the lever in the tractor that controls the Tiger Paw Crumbler to position the reel as needed. If down pressure is required, place that lever in the detented position. If float is required, place that lever in float, and if the crumbler needs to be lifted, use the lever to lift the reel from the ground. If the crumbler is lifted, use the pin with the T-handle at the cylinder mount to lock the crumbler in the air. Place the pin in the lower hole to assure the, the crumbler is locked up. If your cow tiger is not equipped with hydraulic cylinders to control the tiger paw crumbler, use the operator's manual to understand the position of the pin in order to place the crumbler in the desired position. If your Kalo Tiger is equipped with a three bar coil tine heavy duty harrow, adjust the pitch and the depth of that harrow to achieve the output the user desires. The settings for this can be found in the operator's manual. If equipped with a spike tooth harrow, adjust the pitch and the depth of those as needed to achieve the desired output. Use the operator's manual as your guide. The sixth and last step are the final adjustments to the Ikao Tiger 875. This step involves evaluating the field output of the tool to assure that it's meeting the needs and the desires of the operator. The Ikao Tiger should be achieving six inches or less size clods if using the Tiger Paw Crumbler. It should be providing a level output. If it is not achieving the desired output, return to the previous steps and readjust the tool. For maximum productivity, the Ikao Tiger should be run between 5 and 7 miles per hour and is recommended to run at an angle to the corn rows if in that condition. The disc blades of the Ikao Tiger should cut and mix residue. The shanks and the tiger points should be set 1 inch below the compaction layer to achieve maximum compaction layer fracture. The rear leveler and the tiger paw crumbler or rear attachment should fill the shank paths properly as well as provide ample clod sizing under six inches as well as a level output. Those were the six key steps and adjustments that are required to make to the Ecolo Tiger 875 to capitalize on its ruggedness, productivity, and agronomic design. Again, my name is Chris Larson, Tillage Product Specialist with Case IH. Thank you for your time today.